Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today I would like to touch on a subject, why we're gaining weight, why we're always hungry and the mechanism um, triggers all of this phenomena. But before I start uh, my video, can you please ask you a big favor, can you please subscribe to my channel, like it and smash that bell uh, uh, button so you won't miss any of my future videos. Uh, the reason is that I'll just give basics here, but I think we need to follow up so we understand more in details uh, how to combat issues that uh, many people are facing these days. I, I guess, you know, um, eating less or eating food that you don't like, it's not an option to lose weight. But, you know, let's start thinking why we're gaining weight. So the reason why we're gaining weight besides overeating and other things is uh, we trigger too much insulin. Insulin is a hormone that would go into bloodstream and try to bring glucose levels down. The way it works, it will create glucose into fat deposits and deposit it for later in body parts. So what we're trying to do uh, to lose weight, we're trying to not to trigger insulin as much as possible. So insulin levels, when they're low, our body most efficient let's talk about what triggers insulin uh, and good place to start what does not trigger insulin so none of the fat would trigger consumption of fat would trigger insulin response so any fat that you consume uh, basically would not be on that chart uh, let's talk about proteins um, proteins would trigger insulin response, but protein is very expensive fuel for the body. It takes more energy to break down protein that body can get from protein. So when body uh, gets protein, it's used for more muscle repair and other processes rather than breaking down for um, energy. The only source that gets broken down to energy very quickly, very inefficiently and very damaging would be uh, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can come in any shapes and forms, but let's just put under umbrella carbohydrates. It would be sugars, it would be fructose, it would be uh, simple carbs, even complex carbs with very little fiber. Any carbs would trigger insulin, but even complex carbs with uh, lots of fiber would be on that graph. So let's say we woke up in the morning, uh, our blood sugar levels already high, and the reason is that because we wake up as a result of cortisol injection in the body to suppress melatonin. So we start with a point where uh, sugar levels are either normal or high. I was very modest in, in a graph. I put uh, blood sugar levels as normal. And let's say you eat your first meal or you drink your coffee with milk. Anything like that would trigger huge insulin response. Why? because your body is insulin sensitive in the morning. It did not eat anything for whole night and it's sensitive in anything you give it. So it would create a lot of insulin spike, right? It would be so high, uh, so bl blood sugar level will be so high that insulin spike will be huge, right? And if you your breakfast will be made of mostly carbohydrates or at least half of carbohydrates or even some carbohydrates because body is so sensitive most of the carbohydrates that you consume in the morning will be stored as fat even though if you eat uh, very little or um, no food uh, that's very unfortunate situation so let's say it comes uh, i don't know two hours later because insulin cannot stop working immediately when blood sugar level goes down so it will actually start working less when blood sugar level become normal but because it dips under normal blood sugar level you feel a little bit lightheaded you feel a little bit hungry and this is the point of hunger let me mark it that's the point of hunger of lack of energy and lack of energy would be coming from not enough glucose in the, in the bloodstream and body knows that if it asks for glucose because you already gave glucose right you will give more so you feel a little bit hungry and this is where you snack in the morning right when you snack it spiked insulin again and your snack 
unlikely go to energy production or very little portion of it will go to energy production and again insulin will be released and um, it will be stored as fat and then you come into lunch and so repeats itself and you will have probably four to eight meals a day when i say meal it's not what you believe you're sitting down and having a plate of food meal is every time that you consume carbohydrates during the day so this is your breakfast this is your morning first snack second snack uh lunch uh, after lunch dessert uh, brunch before dinner dinner after dinner dessert every time that you eat carbohydrates will be counted as a meal and every time that your insulin level above normal blood sugar level or uh, insulin trying to suppress that high glucose level in, in, in the blood you will gain weight how to combat this situation let me quickly wipe off that graph i'll wipe a little bit and to suppress it is to understand how best way to eat it's not what to eat it's what's the best to consume your food so let's mark that's the, your normal blood sugar levels you wake up with high blood sugar levels already so what i suggest in the morning to suppress your blood sugar levels they're already high is to drink apple cider vinegar apple cider vinegar would bring beneficial bacteria to gut so it won't bring it because it doesn't have bacteria but what it will do um, it will restore that acidity level and make sure that good bacteria will have opportunity to thrive also apple cider vinegar proven to reduce blood sugar level right so what we've got here instead of spike that we saw before right the blood sugar level stays normal it stays like that then you come to your breakfast and i would suggest breakfast instead of cereals and everything that traditionally we eat would be high fat moderate protein almost no carbohydrate breakfast this way fat would not spike insulin proteins and good quality carbs would spike it a little bit and because spike is so small when you are hungry again especially because you consume very low carbohydrates your graph will be more like that as you can see and if your lunch is mostly protein and same with dinner what will happen sorry i'll quickly i'm not good at drawing but because spike won't be as big it will quickly go down and stabilize and then another one so the moment that you possibly can store fat it's only here and it's very small time compared to previous one not as high as well so it gives you opportunity to recover also gets the opportunity if you eat very low carbs for your body for your liver start producing ketone bodies ketones work on oxidizing fat so whatever was stored before it will be break broken down by oxygen into ketone bodies and other biological processes into energy this is the way that you can lose weight and not to damage your metabolism so consuming high fat or moderate fat high protein or moderate protein and low carb meals would ensure that your insulin doesn't spike you don't store that fat right and when it comes to here you actually oxidize your fat for energy and the reason is that why i put only two because you won't be hungry so your body won't ask for food and you won't reach for the snack you have two proper meals or even one meal which is one meal a day or mad or you may even do intermittent fasting and that way your body will function well you won't be hungry and you won't store fat so i would like to touch quickly what is the difference between starvation and and fasting starvation is when you eat carbohydrates your blood sugar level spikes and then goes dips 
and low blood sugar level creates a um, situation where you're hungry, when you're tired, and your body expects glucose to keep it running for the energy. Here, body does not expect glucose. It knows that you're giving fats and proteins, right? So it will know to go and oxidize fat levels when there is no more food. So it would not ask you, it would not make you hungry. And that is fasting. Fasting means not eating. Starving means being hungry. So that's the difference between ketones burning fat, insulin storing fat. And it's a fine balance between two. So calories in, calories out, not as matter as what you consume. You can consume one avocado, 400 calories, and basically go through whole day without feeling hungry. Or you can consume cereal and at 10 o'clock feel hungry, and then consume, uh, drink coffee with milk, and then feel hungry towards the lunch, then lunch, and at 2 p.m. have some chocolate or whatever. And you can see pattern that you're not only overeating, you're setting yourself for the situation when you continue being hungry as a result of food choices that you make. So if you have any questions about that or what to eat on how to avoid hunger or lose weight, please put down in the comment section below. And also, if you'd like to know more about intermittent fasting or um, a right nutritional points in day I will, I will create that video as well also i put in the links down below uh, one of the best apple cider vinegars or uh, artificial sweeteners that i consume i recommend uh, that would help you to consume less glucose and, and 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 rise blood sugar levels thank you so much for watching until next time